Hey guys, what's up? It's Kevin here, back with another coffee break. This is coffee break for April. If you, go, if you guys don't know, uh, like coffee break is a new series that I'm starting where it's essentially a summary of uh, like everything that I liked in April, uh, stuff that has come out or leaked or stuff like that. Just in general, um, mainly trying to consolidate like all of the cool projects that came out that are upcoming, etc. Um, in the month of April. Um, not that everything that I'll be talking about was initially announced in April. Maybe I found out about it late or early or, you know, like what have you. It's just sort of a condensed version of what I thought was cool, what's interesting and stuff like that. So it doesn't only have to be products, it can be media, etc. So, and we are going to make some coffee. So yeah, this month I'm going to be using Moving Coffee Roastery. I got their Ethiopia, which has jasmine honey, uh, muscat grape, and it has like a whiny taste. It's in Ethiopia. And that's the Lagoracone, Lagoracone. And then this is the Phantom. Um, it is from uh, Guatemala. It's chocolate, Ferraro, uh, like panela and balanced. So this is mainly just for a very balanced brew while this is a single like, origin. Um, today I'm gonna be making it with my mocha pot. So it's a smaller mocha pot that my wife and I received as a gift. Small over here. It is sort of uh, tarnished because I'm an idiot and I put it in the dishwasher like an amateur, but it still works perfectly fine. Uh, it just has this like darker look to it and it's a bit rougher to the touch. So, uh, and heat that up. And then I'm gonna be using the Ethiopia, the single origin. I honestly, I don't find too much of a difference, but I like the single origin stuff just because a lot of the times I can sort of taste the actual like uniqueness of the beans and such uh, versus something that is blended which might be better for like a pour over or if you just want a very good balanced taste of coffee instead of these unique flavors and like personally i really do recommend a mocha pot for those who don't have the money or the space to get like an espresso machine those are really expensive in my opinion to just make a decent cup of coffee and I think a mocha pot really just does the job almost in entirety. It's pretty, it's pretty dang close. And for me, I like mine just iced and uh, black. I usually make it in a latte form for my wife. I'm just waiting for the water to heat up. While we're waiting, let's start the first one as the Adidas Bad Bunny Campus in the Wild Moss. I actually just did a review on it. Please go check it out. I'll put a card up and, or maybe just check out my channel. Um, I really like the shoes. They're a pretty good pair of shoes. They give me like almost like Dunk SB vibes with the really thick tongue. Um, I liked the cloud white, but I think the moss green definitely is a bit more unique compared to like a white on white a uh, pair of sort of chunky shoes. Oh, another thing is that you wanna make sure that you don't overfill or else it'll be sort of very watered down. Also make sure to tighten the top area very, very snugly. And turn it on. And there will be a sound cue for when you know that the coffee is ready. It'll start like gargling almost. And that's when you know that you want to like shut off the heat and then uh, like run it over cold running water. Uh, and then that'll sort of keep it. Cause then if you keep it going, it'll sort of like burn the taste of the, the coffee and it just doesn't taste good in general. Uh, but yeah, the Adidas Bad Bunny Campus, very, very good shoe. I actually have it over here. I put quite a few uh, miles in it. I got it from the Coachella early release and it's been holding over quite well. Uh, not the most comfortable pair of shoes. A lot of people on the review sort of mentioned that. Uh, so I did say that the insole is not removable. It is removable. It's just that you kind of have to like yank it out a bit. So you can replace these with a more comfortable insole. I haven't done that yet, 
but I am planning to do so soon. Next up is Brain Dead Oakley. So this is, I think, the third drop or third release when they released. I think this one, they have three different chop saws. I really like them. Um, I actually picked up the olive pear. Let me go grab it. Here it is. I picked it up from a local store called Bows and Arrows Berkeley. It's a store, like obviously as the name entails in Berkeley, but here it is. It's a really nice pair of shoes. I really like the mesh that they used on the tongue and the sidewall, as well as the carbon fiber looking um, back, I guess, heel stabilizing part. Uh, factory team is basically just a division or a collaboration between Oakley and Braindead where they are like retroing a lot of their more aggressive and classic silhouettes where they have the chop saw and then they have a flesh sandal. Um, so like all that stuff is really, really neat. Neat. Um, I thought it's a very, very cool shoe. I had the Brain Dead colorway, but that one, um, I think I bought it off of Brain Dead's website and for some reason the size wasn't correct and I ended up having to let it go and then now I have the olives. Um, and then I also had the flesh sandals, but I had to let those go just because I personally didn't like how they looked. I liked the chop saw a lot more. So factory team is really releasing a lot of cool stuff. Quality has been on point. I might do a review of these. Please let me know in the comments if you guys would like any retail was 175. Uh, the next one is the union Jordan one, uh, woven, which takes inspiration from the footscape woven. Uh, I thought it looked really cool. It has a neutral gray upper. The leather looks phenomenal. Uh, it has the aged um, sort of like piping or like aged sort of like leather uh, edges. Um, and I really, I really like it. A lot of people are not feeling them. I'm totally down for any remixes of Jordan 1s. And if this ties into any sort of like footscape woven or footscape like revival, that'd be sick. I really, really like the Magista. I loved my like HTM like Magistas and the just the just the OG uh, black with the gum sole that was like fire. Also, here's the gurgling that you'll hear. You can kind of hear that gurgling, and then you want to run this over cold water. Now the coffee itself is now set pretty much. It's all done. I don't know too much about the science. I know that some people put a filter. Here's just some ice. I do have some ice big cubes, but I'm not, I'm not gonna go fuss with that. And the cup, I believe, is a double-walled Hario glass cup. I believe I got, oh no, Hario, Alicinto uh, uh, glass cup. Um, a friend of ours uh, got us those cups and I've been obsessively using them since. Great cups, like thank you very much. Um, but yeah, the Union Jordan 1 woven. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, I just like my coffee black. Man, that is... Ooh. Uh, yeah, so the Union Jordan 1 Footscape, uh, I would like to see a multicolor version. Man, that'd be really sick if it was like a, um, like a Chicago colorway or a bread colorway and it having the ra rainbow woven, that would be really sick. Um, they, seems like only one colorway has leaked so far. Maybe there is a Union exclusive colorway which will have the rainbow woven, but we'll see. Um... Mm. The JLAL, JLAL Hoka's, uh, I did a review on the high top and the low top. I've actually been wearing the high top really, really frequently. I actually just went hiking today. Here they are. I'm not going to put them on the table because that's kind of gross, but went hiking. I, I really do like the shoe model itself. I don't need the JLAL, JLAL, um, or Jean-Luc, uh, collaboration uh you think this is honestly like one of the best like hiking boots that i've owned just like period um big big fan of these just because of how light they are and then just how sturdy they feel once they're on your foot uh the low top 
very, very nice shoe as well. I've been wearing the lows more casually just to work and et cetera, but it's super, super rugged. Big fan of JLAL. And I think, so they just partially released the Roa like collaboration, which I liked. I've, I've kind of wanted them since he posted about them like quite a few months ago. But my biggest issue is that there was no announcement prior. They literally were just like, it's available today. And by the time I found out that they were coming out today, a lot of the places were already sold out. It sucks, but some stockists are getting them delayed, uh, like sometime this upcoming week. So hopefully I'll be able to snag a pair, but we'll see about that. I've never owned a pair of Roas before, but I know they're very sturdy, but also another part of me is thinking like 520 is really, really, really expensive for just a pair of hiking like low tops it's yeah it's it's a little bit like there you know i really like the human race sambas um they're doing a i think six or seven colorway release with um in collaboration with uh, La echo leather they are a leather studio that they've made some of the best leathers in the world um i believe that jam used their leather their kangaroo leather I believe on their Roa collab, um, but just in general, like Echo Leather, like they are very like innovative in terms of their dyeing process as well as like like waste like minimization. They're doing amazing stuff with trying to minimize the amount of harm that it does to to have a leather tannery running and also like create leathers with like new unique properties as well as like like all that other stuff. Very very interesting. Um, I'm a big fan that, you know, like Pharrell and uh, the human race is just pushing the boundary a little bit for their Salmas. I am interested in the all black or the all white or even the orange color. I really like the green as well. I like a lot of them. I mean, like even the lilac, like the sort of lavender looking color. Very, very nice. Um, big fan of them. My only thing is that, so it looks like they come with raw leather laces um, where the tips aren't even finished. Now, my biggest issue is that once they start getting used, or let's say you're going to swap out the laces, it's going to be kind of hard to like relace them, right? Especially if the tips aren't like dipped in um, like something to make them like more solid or if it doesn't have like a point to it. That's my only concern for it, but I guess we'll see. Ooh, uh, a cold wall just um, is just, I guess, announced. I, well, actually, like I saw that they actually just released uh, now is the a cold wall dyed Converse. Uh, I forgot that shoe model. It was, it was like the Aeon, I believe, where they had a, a, a colorway that was like gray, orange piping and the green sole. And then they had like a black and like neon piping. Uh, they're doing their dye project. So they have four different dyes. I believe they have like a solarized and then they have like stuff that's like almost all black so i thought that was really cool i really like when a cold wall does that stuff because they've done it for the vomero and they initially released when they did an all red as well as a solarized i believe and like each of those were like hand done in their studio i thought that was really cool i believe it is out now on farfetch i'll leave a description or link in the description down below um yeah oh very very exciting news fear of god finally Finally, after all this time, I think it was like two years, two and a half years, um, finally showcased their Fear of God Adidas collection, uh, which was a part of their Hollywood Bowl fashion show. Um, it was their very first fashion show. They're never on that fashion calendar. Uh, they've always kind of released with promo videos and through stockists or through, you know, direct to consumer. Um, but the Fear of God Adidas stuff looks pretty sick. I really do like it. Um, the predator looking shoe that like Pusha T was wearing, that was really cool. They had a high top model that kind of looked like a rivalry high, but looked like slightly different. Um, they also had like a low top pair that was like a beefed up, almost Samba running shoe-esque thing. Um, like, I really like that all the soles are quite substantial, quite like Fear of God-esque, very minimal. Um, I was a very big fan of the bags actually, the bags that just said like Adidas in a very clean, simple font, as well as the very seamless like sort of handle. Um, the materials looked great. So I'm very excited to see what's gonna happen with them. I'm also a big fan of just like 
Fear of God suiting in general, I thought he killed it. Not a big fan of essentials, but the mainline Fear of God stuff was like fire. It was, it was like cream of the crop. Um, another Adidas release, Youth of Paris. So Youth of Paris is a brand that has been in Paris for quite a while. Um, and last year, I believe they had an Adidas campus release. That was very small numbers, very, very limited. I believe it was only Adidas Europe. Um, it was a black pair with a bunch of distressing. I actually have a pair with me. So here is the Adidas Campus Youth of Paris. Very, very cool box, very cool presentation. And here they are. It's very distressed, almost like uh, Y3-esque, maybe even Balenciaga-esque with the distressing and the loose, um, loose fibers. They had a black lace, a neon green, and purple laces. Um, let me check when the manufacture date for this pair was. This pair was manufactured July 2021. It was manufactured in July 2021. They had a very, very small release. Um, and then now they're re-releasing it with a all white colorway. So I'm very excited for the all white colorway. Um, this black colorway will also be available and they each come with sort of this Adidas like ID tag, which I thought was cool. Very, very cool shoe. Very, very black, sleek, uh, like sort of looking. I really like it. Um, I'm very excited to see the inverse, the all white color. I believe it already did a pre-release on Adidas Confirmed Europe and then I believe worldwide next week, early May, if I remember correctly, May 6th maybe. Check the confirmed out, they probably have more info. Next up is the Lorenz OG Solomon. I think it's really cool when Solomon, like when, like when companies that aren't like super, super massive, like Nike and Adidas um, are able to move in a very like agile way. I think it's very impressive. And that's one of the benefits of having such a small tight knit company. Not saying that Solomon is a small company, but they're smaller than the other two where they're able to maneuver and they'll be able to look at talent be able to do quicker turnarounds and be able to do stuff like this, where he was able to create, you know, not like one of ones, but he was able to produce some batch pairs for people and kind of like inject some more like energy into um, the Solomon like brand right now and kind of pairing up with a creative like, you know, like Lorenzo G. Very, very cool, very interesting. I think them having that ear to the ground, although he's not very small, but it's sort of like a no-brainer. I just don't know why other people haven't done like more full-fledged projects or collaborations with him. Next up is the End Clothing Social Cycling Adidas. I believe it is the the Velo Samba, where it is a samba that is that the sole is very very hard and it's mainly meant for people who cycle. Uh, the Velo Samba was a really cool release. They had two colorways. They had one that's like a very neutral coffee sort of colorway, and then the other one that was very colorful, that had the uh, like end colors. I thought both of them were really, really sick. The leather, I believe, or the leather or the suede was from the factory that's in Leeds, and I thought that was a really, really cool like way to kind of keep it like close to home. And that's what I really think some collaborations need to do is they need to like really hone in on that market and their direct consumer where like, I mean like end clothing, I think their consumer, it, it, it should really speak to their main consumer. And I think this project really did. Um, and I just thought the model itself was really, really sick as well. I haven't seen a Villa Samba before. Um, I am very interested. Personally, I didn't pick it up just because of the fact that after taxes, after shipping, it would probably end up being almost 190, uh, like US, which I didn't think I would want to pay that much for a Samba. Um, maybe later down on the line, a secondhand pair, or maybe if it even hits sale, maybe I'll consider picking it up. But I do think that it is an amazing shoe. And I already, if I didn't already have, you know, the Jason Dill Samba, maybe I would have considered picking it up. But since I already have that, I think I'm okay on white Sambas for right now. Ooh, the Yeezy 350 V3 prototype. So this pair I've seen for a while, but I just recently re-came upon this uh, the color. Looks fantastic. I just loved the sort of space-agey organic energy that 
Ye was putting out during the Jesus is King uh, or the Yandi sort of era, where it was very like, it was spiritual, maybe not super evangelical religious like Jesus is King, like that that cool like Kitsiko sort of vibes. Um, I think it was a huge missed opportunity. I think the TPU sort of bubbles that were on top, very, very nice. I think the 380 that came out was an evolution of the 350, but it was a little bit of a miss in my opinion. It just, the silhouette just didn't look right. Um, it just felt weird. It, it is comfortable. It's a very, very comfortable shoe, but it just, something about it just didn't feel super cohesive. Ooh, something that's coming out is the Nigel Sylvester Airship. I think Nike hasn't been doing a very good job with promoting the Airship. Um, they did a few um, like neighborhood releases uh, with the colors, like the all blue one was a collaboration with uh, La Ama Manier, where it was numbered. I thought that was weird, made no sense whatsoever to me. Uh, they had like a green one, and then they had an orange one, and I think the red one was with the New Beginnings pack, and like, you know, like all that other stuff, but I really do think that Nigel Sylvester having his airship would sort of kind of put some more energy into that model. It's not a bad model, but it just feels like a blazer, essentially. It's like a Jordan 1 blazer. Even though, yes, I know, it's a precursor to the Jordan 1, but it still has that almost like blazer-esque feel. Another pair that already released, and I knew about it, but I just recently came up on, um, and I heard that they're doing a bigger, a much bigger like, release, is the Matin Kim, or the Matin Kim. Uh, like, it's a Korean brand, it's a Korean um, store, uh, like Asics. So I thought it was really cool. They released three different models. The one that I really like is the one with the ribstop, almost grid looking. Um, like people are saying that it's copying Solomon just because it has the speed laces and it has the toggle, but Personally, I think a lot of running shoes have that. It's fine, but I think it's a cool take. And I think Asics is also doing a fantastic job. I really do think that this year, you know, one surprisingly like Oakley's doing really well. I really want like Asics to do very well. I mean, I think he's, not he's, um, Asics is really doing amazing with the Kiko projects as well as Kiko leading like their inline special project stuff, as well as like, I mean, like ASICS is also tapping into heritage with the Ronnie Feig stuff. Um, and then also like Solomon, very, very, very good GR colorways. I think Nike and Adidas are kind of slowing down a bit. Nike, the Jordan one is not as coveted as it used to be. And a lot of collaborations just make no sense. A lot of projects make no sense. Adidas, there is barely any storytelling. There is barely any follow through. I feel like almost when one release happens, it's immediately gone. Doesn't get the full brevity of what Adidas can really push. Adidas wants um, to just make the shoes and kind of let it go instead of really trying and develop something within it. Adidas has some great projects. None of them really get told properly or none of them really get told in like a full scope manner. And that's where I feel like a lot of consumers miss out who aren't super like tapped in, if you get what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, that is what I feel like Adidas could be doing better. And that's what a lot of these smaller brands are actually like kind of nailing on the head. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know if there's anything in April that you guys found interesting in the comments down below. I want this to be sort of like a dialogue. Um, I may even turn this into a podcast audio form. Um, not too sure how to do that, but I'll, I'm sure I'll figure it out. But yeah, thanks. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.